Gaming and Esports, uh, you know, presentation here with, with Marcy and myself. And just to give you folks a little bit of background on, on who we are, um, I'll, you know, I'll start with myself. I've, I've been involved in esports for, gosh, several years now. I mean, I've been a gamer my whole life, but um, I, I have not just been involved in esports. I've been involved in some professional organization, uh, in a capacity in professional organizations as well. And I actually see a lot of parallels between esports, which, you know, a lot of people think of as just, just gamers, right? Um, but the, the organizational concepts that apply to esports structures apply just about everywhere else. I mean, most recently is the chair for statewide cybersecurity commissions for uh, community and technical colleges. And the exact same skills used there are the ones that I use in esports. Um, Marcy? Yeah, it's a pleasure to meet everyone this evening. My name is Marcy Alstrom. I'm the recruitment and admissions manager at Grace Harbor College. Um, I'm actually from Aberdeen. I grew up here. Um, I'm also a first generation college student. So as someone who has my career in helping students navigating accessing higher education, it's been a real pleasure to work with Ralph in the uh, esports program to really work with a lot of our local youth uh, in terms of navigating obstacles to higher education. Uh, sometimes that can mean, you know, financial aid, uh, transfer degrees, really just learning about the college going process. But in general, um, I have about 10 years of experience working in colleges and universities all across the country, focusing mostly on student leadership development, uh, the connection between in-class instruction, work experience, and really students' passion for a career. So being able to articulate those co-curricular activities and how they can help students to build a career pathway. So uh, really, really excited to partner with eSports and helping students not only get involved in an awesome program, but get started at college as well. Awesome. Thank you, Marcy. And, you know, it's also worth mentioning that the two of us have been doing quite a bit of esports outreach since April of this year when we started doing those Thursday night gaming, all ages community gaming nights to, to really build and cement the gaming community that we have here already, but sort of uh, provide a place for us all to get together and, and, you know, virtually say hello on a regular basis. And Marcy has been instrumental in that every week we spend time playing games in our community and really honoring the importance of play. So um, I've, got, I've got two things that I'm really looking for, two things I want from, from what we're talking about today. And one is, is an opportunity to recruit. You know, target audience for, for what Marcy and I are talking about are either you know, parents of teens or, or folks that are in our K-12 school system who are you know, wondering, okay, well, what is, how does esports actually point to something? How does it actually go somewhere? And I guess the second outcome that I would, I would want to do is to challenge some of your perception of video gaming. I think, Marcy, you once told me you had a different perspective on gaming uh, when, you first, when I first uh, wrangled you into this. Yes, absolutely. I know when I first started, I thought about playing games and especially um, esports play really as a leisure activity, something that was, you know, simply for fun. Um, and what I've since learned since partnering with Ralph and our esports program at the college is that there's a lot of really, really important skill development that students are engaging in. So I don't know if y'all encounter similar uh, preconceptions, whether it's around esports or you know other hobbies that either youth or young adults might have. Um, but you know where there's passion, there's a lot of opportunity for skill development as well. So uh, you know some of the questions I guess I, I would want people to be thinking of as we're talking through this are you know what, what kind of games are your kids playing? And I think most folks would have an idea at this point of at least one or two of the titles that are popular. Of course, people are going to say Fortnite right off the bat. Um, you know, some of the Call of Duty stuff has become pretty popular. There's, there's things like Overwatch or Minecraft. Um, you know, a lot of these titles you'll recognize. Um, well, the next question to be, why are they playing those games? What is it about those titles that draws them to those games? Hey, Shelly over in Facebook chat saying hello. Nice to see your face again, too. Um, so, you know, wondering, so asking yourself, why, why are these people drawn to these specific games? Fortnite, I think, is just a global phenomenon. And as such, I think it's, it's pretty important to say, okay, well, you know, if you have a, a family member who is spending 10 to 12 hours a week 
in this environment, you know, maybe more, maybe less. Um, why? Like, what is it that they're getting out of this? And then the next question would be like, who are they playing games with? And I, you know, I think as we get down these questions, um, a lot of us, if we're not directly involved in that gaming component, these questions start to get a little bit more uh, unknown to us. And, um, you know, I, I, I guess that just, I just want to get, uh, jump into some stories really uh, about specific people that that I have known, folks that I have met. So I want to first talk about about Adam uh, D. Um, Adam is a kid that I met, gosh, I think in 2010. So I had started a Minecraft server of my own. And this guy from the UK somewhere, it turns out he's from Devonshire, um, starts starts hanging out. And I, <laughs> like he, he started asking a bunch of questions. And it turns out he didn't know computers or gaming very well at all. And, um, but he was pretty curious. And so I, you know, I sent him a couple of links and we chatted a little bit. And uh, I think he was, gosh, he must've been 16, maybe, maybe younger, maybe 14 at the time. Anyway, um, so he opened up uh, uh, a couple of wikis, started teaching himself Java. Um, I had a need for a plugin. He, he spent about a week and a half teaching himself how to, how to fix this plugin for this Minecraft server so that trees would fall more realistically. And um, the, the owner of that source code just dumped it off to him and said, great, somebody else wants to have this, you, you have it. So he became the maintainer for an open source software project for Minecraft. Well, fast forward to today, he actually uh, decided that he wanted to major in computer science. He got his bachelor's in computer science and he started a company designing AI for video games. And um, I think he's in, in you know year four or so of his company in the UK and starting to pick up steam. And, um, uh, I, I was so pleased to have had even a small part to play in that. Um, Graydon Y is actually uh, another student and I'm pretty excited about Graydon. Graydon's 15. Uh, he is a freshman in Olympia, a uh, high school in Olympia, and most recently had the opportunity through involvement with our program to handle the broadcast play-by-play uh, -play -play commentary for the National Junior College Athletic Association's eSports uh, fall championships, um, which will be, I think later on, maybe early next month, we we'll rebroadcast on ESTV as well. So um, just, just really phenomenal that a, a kid can, can have an opportunity, have that skill set, and then just jump into, uh, into using it, putting it to use. And uh, that the, the ability to move quickly in esports and gaming is something that I, I always appreciate. Uh, Abby T is another student, or is, is a student here at Grace Ever College, the first one on this list actually that is a student. Um, and Abby is not a strong competitive gamer. She does love to play games. Um, and so I, you know, I invited her to help do some commentary uh, for our Rocket League. That's, a, that's an esports title that we have. Um, and you know, she said, sure, I'll give it a try. And uh, it turns out she loves it. Um, in <laughs> as far as like working with volunteers, the best thing is when they ask me in advance, hey, are we doing X, Y, Z today at you know, three o'clock? Rather than me having to go track down these volunteers, it, it shows that level of investment and commitment coming from the student really directly. And so, you know, I guess you could say Abby's working on public speaking skills or, um, you know, multitasking while she's doing play by play and color commentary on these on these games on these titles, but um, it's also an opportunity for a young woman to be the face of uh, of an esport commentary process to be a face on the broadcast and that's just a huge opportunity to uh, that that I think education can really play a, a strong point in in changing some of those demographics that are right now overwhelmingly male um, xx light joker xx is another kid that I met off my minecraft server um, I you know gosh I think he was well I don't I, I know he was he was either preteen or in, in his early teens um, and he was, he was a kid who wandered in and um, just spent some hours on my Minecraft server. I, I do have to tell you that over this weekend, I think it was Saturday, uh, we had about a 45 minute phone call through Discord and he was asking me, okay, so I'm interested in spinning up my own Minecraft server on an AWS instance on the Amazon cloud. And um, I really want to use something with the service records in DNS where we're doing port forwarding uh, I'm wondering if I can do that while also loading the world in a RAM disk so that it, it runs faster. And, and we talked about this stuff and you may not understand anything of what I just said, 
But those skills in terms of a distributed computing environment and cloud computing, as well as understanding some of the glue that holds internet services together is all stuff that this kid, well, I'm sorry, this man, uh, he got married, uh, like I think in September, um, you know, looking forward to starting a family. Uh, that Those skills came to him through gaming because he sees the mechanics at work and he thinks I, I need to understand this because I want to do this. I want to build my own. Uh, what do I need to do? And that, that fueled him to understand some really complex subjects. And then the last one is a, another student here at GHC. Uh, Scruffy is his online name. And, uh, you know, another student like Abby, who's not a strong competitive gamer, but I said, hey, does anybody know how to, how to code Discord bots? And he said, no, but that sounds like fun. I, I think I want to teach myself. And so he's taught himself Node.js which is a, a pretty cutting edge programming language. Um, and he is, he is building a Discord bot um, in another distributed environment using cloud computing resources that is going on the official GHC Discord server to help greet and manage uh, you know, players and registrants for our, our community game nights and our tournaments and things like that. And that's, you know, those are just a handful of some of the stories that I've seen in gaming where we're talking about video games having real world outcomes. So, uh, so let's talk esports. Um, esports short for electronic sports. I mean, uh, there's, there's sort of this concept about, about video gaming, but when we're talking about esports, we're really talking about strategy and, and leveraging an entire team as your asset. This isn't one person going through all 99 levels of doom, slaying zombies and monsters until they get to the ending credit screen. This is a, a group of humans competing against another group of humans, seeing how well that they can work together as a team. And, and your instruments are not just your controller, mouse and keyboard, but the social and interpersonal skills you have with other people that, that really makes the difference there in terms of whether or not that team is going to succeed. And, and that's one of the reasons why I think esports is such an exciting opportunity for, for education and for, for younger people. Okay, so, but what does an esports student actually do? Well, they're part of a team. Uh, that team has a league game usually every week, sometimes more than once a week. Uh, the team will also scrim or scrimmage against another college, usually once a week. Um, the players practice with their teammates and, you know, they work with a coach for replay analysis or, or VOD review and VOD review, the VOD stands for video on demand. And that's, um, you know, I've got some examples. Uh, if anybody wants to DM me, I'm happy to share them with you where, you know, we hired somebody who is a pro gamer in Poland and walks us through an hour and a half recording of our gameplay bringing up maps and strategy and discussing ways that we could approach that differently and, and, and some pretty high level concepts for map control and, and reading your opponents. I mean, it's just the, the strategy aspect of it is um, incredibly complicated and, and it's, it's amazing to watch a finely tuned team working. Okay, so I, I, and I, I'm getting to the end of my, my initial info spiel here. Uh, getting into collegiate esports is actually really wide open right now. Um, I, I suspect the next five years are going to see that mature quite a bit and become more formalized, more like the traditional um, traditional athletic approach. Um, you know, right now for GHC anyway, you fill out the recruiting form, get in touch, you know, become a student, keep your GPA above 2.0. Um, the, the most of the leagues ask for 12 credits each quarter. Um, they've cut that down almost across the board to six because of remote learning and coronavirus. I mean, it's just, it's a lot to ask. So they've cut that down. And then, uh, you know, focus on one or two competitive titles with growth and improvement. Um, and, you know, keep your eyes out for scholarships, not just us, but schools all over the place are increasingly offering scholarships for esports, which if I could have 25 years ago told my friends that I was going to get, go to college, get an education in part by playing video games, uh, it would have blown my mind. This is, we're literally talking about a golden ticket here. Um, I, I, I cannot believe how awesome that is. Uh, I got a question from Will here. How many team members did you carry last season? How many anticipate coming in the new year? We had 15 that were registered last season. We're getting ready to start our second and final season of the year. And we're looking at 26 right now. Um, 
there's a lot. <laughs> well, you're in traditional athletics, so you you got to know that there's a lot of gotchas and ifs that go along with that. But that's what we've got written down on paper right now. It's in pencil. I'm hoping to get that written down in pen soon. Um, our peers over at Peninsula College started their first year with 15 students for the first academic year. And then now they're up to 27, uh, I believe, 27, maybe 29. Um, Centralia College was at 54, I think, and they're in their third year. So, uh, you know, it sounds like growth wise, we're about on par or maybe a little bit faster than they are. Given that we've got coronavirus going on, um, that's, uh, I, I look at that as a win. Okay, so, so what's in it for the schools, though? You know, let's, what's, where's, the, where's the money coming from? Um, so in this case, the, the schools see increased enrollment. Uh, you know, getting the enrollment numbers up because students are interested in doing esports. Um, that's a huge win for us. You also tend to see increased matriculation. So students who are involved in, in extracurricular activities, not just esports, but in all kinds of extracurricular activities are students who stay involved. They finish their full two years, they get their degree, they finish their classes, and then they move on and they go somewhere else. And um, so, so seeing students engaged in something besides, yeah, I've got three Canvas classes that I have to do this quarter. Uh, they have a reason for coming into school and they have a reason to do good. And they have that connection that is just, it's, it's huge. It's a huge benefit for the schools. We also get that higher profile in the community. And then esports is significantly less expensive than a lot of other programs can be. I mean, uh, you know, Will might be able to talk a little bit about, you know, insurance or you got to line up buses to, to, to run a whole group of people down and you got to feed them when they're down there. Sometimes you got to, you know, if you're traveling to play a game, you got you to pay for hotel space and, you know, national competition just is, isn't even really possible on, on any kind of scale. With esports, you know, we've played against North Virginia. We've played against Florida. Uh, we played against Jacksonville in, in, gosh, I don't even remember what state they were in, somewhere on the east. Uh, it was a close game, but they beat us. Uh, I mean, we have such uh, capability to play a ton of different schools. And, you know, the program is, is really, really cheap to run. Um, and then the last thing, it, it, the students have such an improved mental health from participating in esports. When they get peer recognition and that sense of belonging, um, they get those friendships that come out of it. Are, it's just huge. And then the last thing on this list where it says organizational support for their identity, uh, that really should be number one. Because you have a student who says, yeah, yeah, I'm a gamer. It's this part of my life that, that you know, I, I do alone at home in my room with my friends. And you, you give them a jersey and that jersey says Grace Harbor College and it says my educational organization recognizes this part of your identity and what you do is important. And we're going to invest in you and we have a space on campus for you. And we're going to build a support structure for you. We're going to bring in coaches because we care about your growth and your mindset. And we're going to be interested in connecting you with four year schools that have esports programs because we want you to go farther and we want you to, to grow, to outgrow us and go somewhere else and do bigger and better things. When they see an organization that says, I believe in you. I mean, for, for somebody who's a, who's a young person who's just developing and, and really coming into that identity on their own, th that's just huge. I, I cannot underscore how important that is uh, for, for some of these folks who maybe haven't found their belonging in an organizational structure prior to now. So, um, the last slide that I've got before I'm going to hand it over to Marcy for a little bit, and, and please feel free to, to throw in questions if you've got them, is some of the skills gained from esports. You know, critical thinking is going to be number one. Um, there there are, are just a ton of examples that are outside of somebody holding a controller playing a game. Um, I, I have people that are developing, that are using Adobe After Effects to create stinger transitions for streams. Uh, they're doing video and graphic design. Uh, you, know, you know, doing social media management, making flyers. We've got a couple of people that are organizing tournaments that are pretty grassroots, you know, students just, just doing community tournaments and organizing the bracket and the leaderboards and trying to figure out how, how we're going to get people checked in, you know, event management stuff, basically. Um, probably one of the biggest skills that I see students develop right off the bat is that leadership skill. When you put a group of people who, who, uh, play well together, but don't know each other on a team and encourage them to self-organize, you start seeing people doing pretty sophisticated dispute resolution really, really quickly. 
because they have a vested interest in this team succeeding. And so when something comes up, they are on top of it and they want to get to the bottom of it and make sure that this team continues to function smoothly together because we got to beat Centralia next Friday. And, you know, we can't, we can't do that with bad blood. And, um, I, you know, there's just, there's so many aspects aside from playing the game where skill comes into play. But I think I'm gonna hand it over to Marcy to, to talk about some of that stuff. Marcy? Great, thanks so much, Ralph. Um, so the segue in talking about the skill development or what students can expect really to take away from participating in a program like eSports uh, at Grace Harbor College, of course, but likely at any uh, college, uh, is a really great segue into thinking about uh, kind of what I mentioned before, the, the foundation of career exploration. A student has a strong interest in something, right? And um, they're thinking, I want to develop a career or in esports or have a job in esports. And my experience in helping folks to access or start to really look at um, a career pathway is it's really common for people to think about, I have this interest and kind of get narrowed into maybe one job in that industry. So for esports, you know, it's pretty common for folks to think, all right, just being a gamer, right? Like someone who plays games, that's the only job that there is. But the fact of the matter is this is a multi-billion dollar worldwide industry. And in the same way that you know, transportation and logistics is an industry that, that spans the globe um, or organizational management, for example. There's skills, abilities, um, and really important takeaways that students can learn from engaging in these opportunities while at the same time um, having a really focused um, educational pathway that to help can, can help to lead them on to entry level, mid level, and then career type jobs in that industry. So. I love this ecosystem um, graphic here. It's from the North American Scholastic Esports Federation. I think they do a really good job of giving a visual of maybe the uh, four different pillars in this industry where someone might work. So maybe someone would start out um, in the pathway of strategist or content creator or entrepreneur or an organizer. And then you can see in each of these um, pathways, there's different jobs um, that we outline that, that someone might go into. So can you go to the next slide, please, Ralph? Great. So if we think about a strategist, um, I, what I love here about this graphic is we really think about uh, the connection between education, experience, um, and really that, that passion piece, right? So we have the overarching umbrella of esports. Uh, we have this career pathway of maybe a strategist, some jobs that might be available to someone going through that pathway would be a coach, a theory crafter, or, or an uh, analysis. Um, somewhere where a student can start thinking about progressing through that pathway is start to, starting to think about their education, right? So at Grace Harbor College, we do not as of yet have uh, academic way, academic pathway developed for esports students, but we're really good at helping students think about and explore career pathways and then building an academic plan um, to help them reach their goals, whether that means completing an associate degree or certificate at GHC or getting a transfer degree and getting ready to um, you know, go on to a university. So, um, so in this case, you know, we look a little bit at courses like actual coursework, maybe certification or a degree, the skills that someone could expect to learn um, in that pillar or that pathway and then careers. So again, as a strategist, things like operations an uh, analyst and market research, mathematician, financial advisor, performance coach, data scientist. So what we find is that you know, even folks that maybe start in on this career pathway, uh, even if they don't end up working in an esports uh, career or industry, the skills that they are learning along the way, and as students engage in more opportunities and you know find out what interests them and doesn't interest them uh, as they grow and change in the educational environment, you see kind of this whole world of uh, career opportunities unfold in front of them. So we don't have to go step by step through the next ones. This was for strategists. 
but what were the other pillars that we had? We had organizers, right? So um, kinds of jobs that might exist here, general managers, event organizers, IT support. As Ralph mentioned, we already have current Grace Harbor College students that are engaging in these opportunities and learning these skills right now, which is really cool. Can you go on to the next one, please? Great entrepreneurs, uh, some careers might be recruiter, business consultant, product manager, account executive, program developer, lawyer, public relations spe specialist, absolutely. And then content creators, um, you know, students that uh, are learning these skills through an esports program might go on to become graphic designers, content directors, journalists, writers, videographers, video game developers, production coordinators. Um, and there's this amazing website um, that we'll post a link in the chat later. It's called Hitmarker. Um, that really the whole purpose of this website is to post careers in esports. Um, so, you know, we talk about the value and skill development um, as students engage in this pathway. Yes, they might end up uh, working in the career or in the industry, and we can help uh, them to map that out. But if they, you know, as they grow their interests and their abilities, if they find themselves finding a stronger interest in another area, it's really easy once you are able to identify what your skills and abilities are to, to pivot to a different industry. You know, I think now would actually be a really good time to talk about Hitmarker. Yeah. I think I have it open. Yeah, I do. So hitmarker.net is, in general, it is the website for esports jobs. Um, and, you know, right now there are, uh, let's see, 10,200 jobs posted. Um, and one of the cool things about this, about this site is that a lot of these jobs are, are remote you know, you can work anywhere. And a lot of them are part time as well. <clears throat> now, I, I'm not I'm not advising teens to drop out of college and start working part time for esports companies. <laughs> just just to be clear, that's not my goal. But I do want to show you that, um, you know, even esports companies need accountants, even esports companies need marketing social media managers. So, uh, you know, let's just scroll, I'm going to grab USA West specifically. Uh, but I'm going to allow, you know, European stuff here in my filter. I think we can, yeah, there we go. So browsing by location. Uh, let's see, we've got a user experience designer for Shot Call. That's a remote, uh, doesn't, doesn't pay super great. Uh, associate player engagement for Apex Legend, Legends at, at Electronic Arts. So, um, I, you know, just, just out of curiosity, this looks like uh, is somebody who's, who's primarily handling quality assurance for this game. So, you know, measure player engagement, mayor, measure uh, community management, gathering feedback from players, probably combing through bug reports as well to find out what part, and, and user interface reports. Um, things like, you know, to use the analogy of, of traditional sports a little bit, and maybe I'm, I'm overstretching it to the point where it's a little bit silly. Um, a football is just about perfectly shaped. Um, you know, it does its job amazingly well. A lot of these games and titles that, that have a company with a commercial, uh, you know, they've, they've got to, uh, they got to keep the lights on, um, or they got to buy the yachts for their CEOs, whatever it is. Um, they're still refining these games and titles. Football is fixed. It's, it's played a pretty specific way and you're not going to find a whole lot of variation. Same thing with basketball or baseball, or wrestling, you know, uh, track with these game titles, thinking of them as sports, there's a lot of changes going on and, and you can collect user interface information in real time from players playing these games. How often does their mouse go up and click on this, on this menu? You know, how many, how many help desk tickets come in from failing to find the, uh, you know, the customization menu. And so when you're looking, when you're thinking about this, these companies are, are crawling through a bajillion metrics every day. And so this associate player engagement for Apex Legends is just one of many titles where they're saying, how can we build our game better? And you know, uh, this, this job is, is associate, so it's probably more of an entry level job, but somebody who's in this position has the ability to help shape this game title as it continues to be developed. I, I probably went a little too deeply into that one. <laughs> Sorry, I just get real passionate about this stuff. So, um, you know, head on over to hitmarker.net 
and and you will see just tons of jobs and, and scroll through them so that maybe the next time somebody says, yeah, I, I want to work in the gaming industry, that doesn't mean somebody who plays games all day. It, it can, but there are just thousands of other jobs that they're looking to fill right now in that industry. So, uh, you know, I guess I, that, that was my point with that one. <laughs> Sorry, Marcy, I had to jump in and do that. Okay, well, I, you know, now I guess I, I would be interested in throwing it open to, uh, to Q&A or, or sharing some stories. If, if you've got a gamer or you've got some concerns or, or, or some thoughts or, you know, questions, how do, how do I connect this thing that they're passionate about with, with something that you see in the real world or, or, or some kind of an outcome that you're, you're talking about or that they're interested in. So um, yeah, uh, any, any questions in general as well, both Facebook and people here on the Zoom. Great. And before folks start, I'd just like to throw out another friendly reminder that we were recording this session and live streaming on Facebook. Uh, so with that, please remember if you're going to share about, you know, someone else in your life to maintain a bit of their anonymity, especially if they're a current student. Uh, we don't necessarily need to know what school they go to or their full name, but I look forward to hearing your guys' uh, experience. First name, last initial would be great. Mm -hmm. Well, hi Marcy and Ralph. Hi. And anyway, so I'm Kara. I, I'm sure you guys both expected me <laughs> to have something to say. Um, so I do have a son. He is 15 years old. And for his whole life has really been drawn to video games. And I can remember when he was very young, his dad is really into it as well so it was encouraged you know we had all the systems and whatever and there were always the people that said well don't you feel like he's spending too much time and I'm like you should see the stuff he's doing like he's better than any adult I've ever seen and then it, you know just kind of progressed to the point where now he's getting close to this age just starting you know high school and, and I don't feel like it's been a detriment. Some kids are really strong students and can do the gaming. Some are not the strongest students, but still are great at the gaming and then everything in between. So anywhere on the spectrum, his ability I'm in awe. I don't know anything. Like you could put me, you could put a controller in my hand and I would probably end up like turning my chair around and crying because I get stressed out. Like I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> but um, the strategy, the hand-eye coordination, all the things that starting in those earlier ages where you're asking are they doing too much? Should they be on the screen that much? They're doing way more than I saw on the seesaw over there. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's really impressive. And then to see now where, I mean, I think, you know, we can confirm that there's some definite skills that have been um, formed during these years of, of playing. And I don't know, I don't know if it's, if some people are, better at it than others or if it's just the amount of hours or what it is but it's kind of like any other class or any other sport go with what you're good at and who cares maybe it's not geometry or football you're good at it do it <laughs> thank you Kara yeah, the thing that that jumps out at me when I see somebody who's a gamer in their home element is is how much they're using collaborative tools. Um, when I was uh, when I was I was a sponsorship coordinator for about a year for uh, a recreational club called Minor League Esports, and um, I, I remember the thing that first impressed me about them is the collection of Google Docs that they have with headers and footers. Um, you know, a consistent look and feel that were delineating all the rules that they that they had for this league and the structure and the format. 
And most of it was written by 14 year olds that are in this, in this group. And the level of professionalism was just outstanding. And so, you know, here I am a, a 42 year old man bumbling in to say, Hey, let me help you with sponsorship. And they said, great. Cause we hate being on the phone. And I was like, so yeah, okay. Got it. Like, let, let the old guy take care of that. And you all run with what you're doing, but this is a, a group of kids who were using collaboration tools and to, to build a, a virtual structure uh, from the ground up that absolutely is, is uh, professional across the board. Um, minor league esports still runs an outstanding stream. Um, they, they have sponsorships with like energy drink companies, uh, power, a gaming controllers, um, a couple of different websites that, that are, uh, involved in, in esports websites. And, you know, to, to piggyback on a little bit of what Kara was saying, sure. Like, you know, when you're, when you're 18 and you're putting down on your resume, I have experience working in a, a collaborative online environment using, you know, digital tools to facilitate a, a mobile or a virtual workforce. Um, and you say, oh, I did it because I was playing games doesn't sound nearly as well as if you say, I did it as part of an esports program. And I mean, uh, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing an appeal to authority here, but that structure and that organization does help when you're trying to clarify where these skills came from and in what capacity you use them. And seeing rec groups, recreational groups or gamer groups formalized from a group of friends that hang out and now they call themselves a clan with their own Discord server. And they say, no, we're actually, a, we're a rec league called Minor League Esports. And then they say, you know what? We really ought to be a, a 5013C nonprofit corporation. Let's go ahead and make that jump and do that instead. Um, I mean, it's like gaming leads to professional organization. Like it just, it, it, it's, it's astounding to watch. And, um, you know, I, I guess that's the other thing I would say, right? Like if, if you're looking at this and you're thinking, okay, that's great. You have all these examples for, for how you can do it, but I don't see how I can get my kid or I, I don't see how I can get our students through that pipeline. That's fine. You don't need to. Marcy and I are really, really good at looking at talent and skills and saying, let's connect this person over here and see what they can do and, and you know, wind up with something that is going to be an impressive line on a resume that will get you a foot in the door, that get you to an interview and start that career process. We have absolutely no reservation about mentoring and hurting people on a professional path. And so if you know that they're passionate about gaming, yeah, bring them on over. Uh, we wanna meet them, we wanna put them to work and we wanna start that journey. That's so great. Thank you for that, Ralph. You made me think, um, I don't know that we've mentioned it tonight, but I wanted to remind everyone that one of the benefits of our esports program, unlike some of the more traditional athletic programs at the collegiate level, running start students are eligible to play. So um, Ralph had mentioned what are some of the qualifications in order to get started in our esports program. You have to be a GHC student currently at, at this time taking at least six credits a quarter. Um, and under normal circumstances, it would be as a full-time student, 12 credits a quarter, maintain a 2.0 GPA. And that's available to running start students as well. So if you have a high school student that's interested in getting college level credit, um, and while they're still working to complete their high school diploma, that's an opportunity that's available to them. Awesome, thank you. So, uh if anybody has any questions, now's your time to, to pipe up. Um, happy, to, happy to talk about all aspects as, as far as I can. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna say, uh, we're looking like we might wrap up a little bit early. Before we do that, since we're recording this session, um, I'd love to just leave everyone with our contact information. If you'd like to learn more about Grace Harbor College or our esports program, you can visit our website, ghc.edu slash esports. You can send us an email at esports at ghc.edu. Um, also, I'll go ahead and put in the chat here 
uh, my contact information as a recruitment and admissions manager. Uh, currently, since GHC is in remote operations, that one of the best ways to get a hold of us is to visit our virtual assistance lobbies. If you go to ghc.edu, Right now at the upper right hand corner of the web page, there's a big red button that says get virtual assistance and you can jump into a zoom room uh, with support staff from any of our student services offices like the welcome center financial aid trio student support center any of those offices so i'll go ahead and post that info in chat right now. Cool well, thank you so much Marcy. All right. Well, I'm going to say that does it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, there, I do see Craig is here from uh, Quinault Schools, and I, I might want to corner Craig a little bit afterwards. So, Craig, <laughs> Craig unless you're, <laughs> you're running out to go somewhere, I'd love to chat with you. Um, but uh, I'm going to say that that is the end of our Zoom meeting. And thank you all for coming. Um, and, uh, hey, have a happy new year, everybody. Thank you so much, Ralph and Marcy. Bye-bye. Thank you.